Good morning, everybody. My name is Gerd van Beveren. I'm Belgian, but uh, based in uh, Germany, where we have the headquarters. And as uh, Fons just mentioned, we are traditionally known for all the solutions and technologies for uh, rail and from the other side, from uh, transportation and traffic. I think this is an exciting moment for me as well, because <coughs> it's the first time I'm in this podcar community. I know it already for a couple of years. But I think there is a, a, a different level of maturity happening right now and that makes it particularly interesting. So I would like to share some experiences we gathered in the last couple of years in the public transport, individual transports, and maybe at the end also some share some ideas how the pot cars and uh, that component of transport might be included in a total concept. Um, I mentioned we're looking at innovative technologies and therefore we first want to try to understand who are the stakeholders. I don't think that is a, a kind of a key uh, answer or uh, something unsurprising. We have the travelers, we have the operators and the authorities. Today I will focus more on the traveler sides. I will leave out a little bit the operators and the cities that would be go beyond this uh, scene. But it would be interesting to find out, okay, the travelers what is happening, what are the demands they have. I heard some parts already in the speeches this morning, but especially because the maturity of the technologies that are provided to travelers has been in changed yeah, dramatically. I mean, smartphones, Bluetooth, all kinds of information, beacon-based and so on, that has a, a huge impact on how people are traveling, what kind of mode they're choosing and so on. <coughs> so let's Assume for a moment we would like to um, understand the traveler in a city that he doesn't know. First part is about trip planning. Um, what kind of options do I have? What kind of priorities or preferences do I have? Can I introduce this? Um, with the trip planning, typically also you would like to know is it better to take the car and or the public transport or a mix of it, kind of a hybrid mode. Secondly, I would like to uh, be uh, guided to the station or the uh, the first uh, trip uh, plan that I have and go into the boarding not taking care about all kind of ticketing schemes that I have knowing about how many zones that I need uh, knowing what kind of uh, best tickets that I could uh, have probably I have um, a switch over transfer would also be good if I'm in a new city that I'm guided uh, where is the best way to go especially also for people with uh, um, uh, impairments or disabled people that also can be guided based on their particular requirements. Yeah, where is the uh, the, the elevator instead of the uh, the, the um, stairs? Exactly. <laughs> um, and finally, also would like to come to the last mile, which might be uh, the pot car. Come back to that and the best uh, price part. Would like to em emphasize also on this best price part because we are. A technology company but we realize that technology is an important part but not the main part. I think at this moment we see also a huge change from technology overtaking by the business impact. What is the business model? How are the people imposing themselves in the market coming up with new business models and I think this will dominate also how the technology will be then uh, connected or driven. So uh, <coughs> All of them can be uh, categorized in three main topics, the door-to-door -door across modes, comfortable access and payments and guidance. I think if you would have categorized them in three families, these would probably be the ones that uh, we would choose and that also travelers would select if they have uh, their priority. So um, we have done some uh, uh, pilots in the last couple of years and in the recent years some real projects. Um, that will help the traveler with one app to guide them through the whole door-to-door -door journey. Starting from the trip planning, comparing all the different options he has, including the price, up to the transaction buying a ticket, if that is the case, in barcode, whatever the uh, operator has as a ticketing scheme, but not just the operator, we're also talking about parking places. We're talking about car reservations for car sharing or bike sharing reservations and so on. And now once you have selected them, we can go up far to also say, okay, let's guide you. Let's inform you when you arrive at the, 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 the tube station where to go in. Or if you come to your destinations, <laughs> that you can be informed where's the best and the next uh, bike sharing location, how many bikes are available and so on. So this kind of information is there. 
And we have conducted, as I just mentioned, a couple of uh, projects. And at, um, at the moment, we have already included numerous types of transportations, numerous operators that have been working with us. And it's not just public transport, We're talking about car sharing, bike sharing, taxis, parking, electrical vehicle charging, and also traffic uh, on, on road traffic. What you might see is pod car operators or pod cars um, providers are missing at this moment. Yeah, we have some early trials, but I think that would be really the next thing that we are looking at, is to find out can we come up with a kind of a joint model where we can include a an operator with pod cars or, uh, and include them into this model. I mean, that is really, somebody raise their hands, definitely would be willing to pick up that uh, conversation. Um, one of the examples already mentioned earlier in the presentations that is very obvious for inclusion in such a kind of an overall mobility ecosystem is uh, the demand responsive transports, especially and many people are from the Scandinavian countries, there it's very uh, common, but also in the rural areas in, in the US, where, pe where the operators say it's too expensive to have the normal lines. Uh, if the lines are very rare, then people will not use it, so you have a vicious circle. Uh, therefore, the demand responsive transportation is really a, a, a very good solution, economically, but also for the traveler, to provide this kind of last mile, as your community is already talking about since many years. And we, we're not just talking about it, we also have some uh, uh, concept and pilots to include them. I think it's a similar way how it is done, with the only um, um, uh, exception that we on, don't have just the traveler side, but we also have the driver side, so the one who is picking up uh, in this context, it's uh, a driven uh, car or it's a driven uh, vehicle that is doing the tour and his journey will be based on the demands. So people can upfront ask for a certain journey and say, okay, I want to be picked up tomorrow that location. I need to go there. I have my uh, starting of the train at that time uh, and the system will gather all of the requests and then like the sales journey, uh, the salesman's journey, find out what is the best route and come up with this route and inform it. Uh, the model as such is not new. I mean, also here, the land, they already have it since uh, many decades already. Uh, but it's more how you communicate and how you can create this dynamic um, model behind it um, of informing people, giving them, them options and especially also making the connection as a last or, or first mile with the rest of the public transport uh, system. And that is the reason why uh, we strongly believe, we have not done it, but it would be really uh, interesting, is that uh, a podcar autonomous driving in, in the ultimate uh, way could be an ideal form for making this last uh, and first mile connection as a part of the public transport or as an individual operator in connection with the public transport. Really that from a traveler point of view, you wouldn't even bother about who is offering it. It's just there. And if I come to a last point and I would like to go home and there is no regular bus anymore, then I could ask for this demand, this demand responsive transport. So that, this is exactly what it is. The concept of the, is there. The different pieces are, are, are already available but it's not tested already in the context with all of this hot car demand responsive pa uh, part. And again, uh, it would be a tremendous opportunity if we could find a pilot where we can test this kind of combination. <coughs> we also have um, the mobility on demand. This was one of the, the themes of this conference. We also have the wording and the more sometimes buzzword mobility as a service. I mentioned before technology is one, but probably more um, imposing itself on the market changes is the business models. And mobility as a service, really as a business model, is changing a lot in the market. We see some new players, especially also again in Scandinavia, very active, very dynamic. Um, uh, Kuhn Kennis this morning mentioned also Mars and, and uh, Sampo, who are already thinking about these initiatives, maybe even in, here in Antwerp. Uh, 
the technology is there, the platform is there, this is the same platform we are implement, implementing and commercializing and putting all these pieces of information together and providing the information to the traveler in form of an app. Yeah. The same information could be used to allocating, for instance, certain budgets. Yeah, really a, a mobility budget and say, okay, if you were to travel and you're not sure about <coughs> is the car the best option or if maybe the public transport is an option. Singapore this morning, somebody mentioned, uh, was uh, Gilbert, I think, people, they want to possess the car, but that's more kind of an idea fix. I mean, you also could say you get the flexibility, just pick and choose whatever you want and you know what, you have a budget to do so. As long as you stay in that budget, you can travel whatever you have. And we will do the collecting at the end of the month. We will do all the business and the invoicing and so on. Don't bother about that. So I mean, that is mobility that you're offering, not just one tram line or a bus line or a metro line. And then also, I think here also the, the pots, cars and these autonomous vehicles can be uh, a, an element in this ecosystem as the total mm -hmm. comprehensive uh, mobility part. Let me maybe end up with uh, the summary. We have seen that the solutions are there, technology is there, a lot of changes in the market going on at the moment. Uh, if you would ask uh, travelers, but also operators, what are the elements that are influencing it? Single mode to multi mode, and multi mode is also multi operator at the same time. They don't want to bother about who is doing this. Secondly, we would like to include everything which is there and that can be individual and uh, public transport. And finally, uh, the business model will definitely also drive how the next 10 years will look like. And I think this community definitely can be a, a, a great contributor to this as well. Thank you very much.